Hey, what up, boys? So, MMORPG news is raining from the skies. It's almost like forces out of our control heard that I have no content and kicked the MMORPG genre up the arse to get things moving. We had the announcement of Quinfall last month, which I didn't cover because it's an obvious scam, PAX Day just a couple of days ago, and an MMORPG that was announced last year just released a bunch of new information that, I'll admit, confirms a lot of suspicions I had about the game. But before we get into that, our patrons and I would love for you to grab yourself a Goodbye, Gola, because uh, Bellator's is one of them MMOs that appeared seemingly out of the blue with vague promises of the typical Unreal Engine 5 garbage, a, a massive world, huge siege battles, next generation graphics. I dare say it was trying to capitalize on the Ashes of Creation hype. Or, or maybe Ashes of Creation was a scam all along. However, with this massive article just released by NU, the developers of Bellators, we learned a bunch of very interesting information involving the combat style, the game mechanics, the PvP, and the PvE dynamic, with a nice little cherry on the top in the flavor of a release window. Spoiler, it's before Ashes of Creations. I'm not excited, but curious to share this information with you all today, because Bellator's most certainly falls into that category of definitely a scam. But maybe after reviewing this article, our minds will be changed now. With all that bollocks out of the way. Generic medieval scene, take two. The orcs will fall this day. Let's begin, shall we? There's absolutely zero footage for this game as it stands, which is a red flag right out of the gate. So this video is just going to be B-roll footage from vaguely relevant medieval games we know and love, supplemented by my beautiful bald head talking into the camera. I'll start today's video by giving you a synopsis of Bellator's and its South Korean developer, NU, because out of the slew of recently announced Unreal Engine 5 MMOs, this one is probably the one we know least about. Bellator's was previously Previously known as Project N1 and was announced swiftly last year as part of NU's investment news. <laughs> That's red flag number two. After this announcement, they were able to secure $25 million from many diverse shareholders, such as investment firms, security companies, and industrial banks, already giving this game a corporate board of shareholders looking to monetize this, uh, game out the wazoo. Bang! That'll be red flag number three. NU's CEO, Jun Hwan Kim, has been in the industry for 20 years or so, working for companies like NCSoft developing Lineage 2, a pay-to-win but respectable game, XL Games developing Arcage, uh, crashed and burned from pay-to-win again, but still a very well-made game, and oh, there it is, working for Blizzard Korea's Overwatch. Ah, that brings us to red flag number four. Damn, so close, but that blizzard employment is gonna have to be a smear on your record, sir. Finally, and probably the most intriguing thing for me is that NU before now was exclusively mobile games releasing bangers, such as Sexy Boober Vampire Simulator, and uh, This Is Most Certainly Not A Clash Of Clans Clone, and The Cream Of The Crop, Please play our game, weebs. We have underaged anime girls in it. Industry gems, no doubt. Is it fair to judge a development team just because their only experience with gaming is the mobile game market? Why, yes. Yes, it is. Bang! Five red flags, game's a scam, video's done. Oh wait, we're only three minutes in. Let's keep going. If by some miracle you're still here and willing to listen to this disaster in the making, the release of this Q&A did explain a fair amount about NU's choices, design philosophies, and the direction that they're looking to take the game, which includes content and the combat mechanics. The questions started off by introducing what Bellator's actually is. 
stating the game is set in the medieval era and will feature hunting, gathering, crafting, and an economic system. Wowzers. This is completely and utterly new and never done before. I'm shocked. Oh wait, I literally just made a video about a game doing this exact thing yesterday. Their aim basically boils down to a few things. It's a medieval sandbox with heavy emphasis on economy through crafting and gathering with faction-based wars. Their focus on the medieval theme will inspire everything from dragons to magic and, interestingly, diverse races. And this statement here is kind of contradictory to what they're saying because actually this whole paragraph here actually describes something very akin to Black Desert Online, which is labelled as medieval Europe fantasy, not just medieval. So with a bit of luck, Bellators will end up with goblins, elves, orcs, and other such interesting races aside from, uh, just humans. Baseless speculation, of course, and let's not forget that this is translated from Korean. The next question involved player choice in the world which stated every buzzword you could possibly imagine, even giving Western corporate media a run for their money, stating claims like a dynamic world, a monster food chain, tangible impact, vast immersive world, and of course a unique experience for each and every player. This truly is a game. But what would be the point of a Korean pay-to-win sandbox without some good old PvP to exploit the Western player base's bulging wallets? At a character creation, you choose between five factions. These factions are directly conflicting with each other in the world, similar to what you're used to in other faction-based games, except it's five ways instead of two. Surely a bigger number means it's better, right? A positive though, it is not full loot upon death. However, there are minor penalties for dying to another player and you are encouraged to kill players with rewards for a reputation based system. All this is basically very reminiscent to what New World should have been with its castle sieges, sandbox-esque faction based PvP, so uh, maybe this type of MMO will appeal to the portion of New World's player base who wanted that open world, unrestricted, non-toggleable faction conflict, except you know, <laughs> it'll be pay to win and dog shit. It, and from here they actually begin talking about the stuff people care about, combat mechanics and the content. So let's jump into this next. So the questions do get rather interesting now, starting with the actual content in the world that isn't PvP. They state they're planning to offer, uh, oh, great more buzzwords. <laughs> They're offering demanding dungeon experiences with raids in the open world. Bellators isn't planning to be instanced, it is a pure open world game that's aiming to offer that old school lineage to world boss conflict that people are oh so nostalgic about. Understandably of course, but you need to recognise when these are false promises because it'll take a highly skilled and talented team to actually pull this off in the current year of meta mentality. Next up, they discuss the character progression and class customization for the game. And holy cow, a world first! This Korean game has no gender lock. However, this is because Bellators is going for a classless system. You do not select a class at the beginning, you just naturally evolve your skills as you use certain weapons over time. Think again, like New World, except pay to win and garbage. Oh wait, isn't that exactly what New World is nowadays? <laughs> to conclude this segment before we move on to the gathering and crafting stuff, this MMO is tab targeting, and although I am a tab targeting enjoyer, for these Korean sandbox games, uh, tab targeting is not the play here, and the combat in these sandbox games gets extremely boring extremely fast without high-paced, action-style combo systems. The reason BDO is so popular still is because the combat is extremely fun and skill-based, making the PvP and PvE dynamic a non-binary experience every time. This, again, just feels like they're trying to say the right things to appeal to the largest possible audience of gullible boomers, so please, please be vigilant when supporting upcoming MMORPGs. 5,000 cosmetic bundles before there's a playable game. Good Korean mobile game. 
bad. Finally, we'll briefly conclude with the crafting mechanics and release window. Crafting and the economy obviously plays a huge part of these upcoming sandbox MMOs because again, they're very loose in origin and appeal to a very wide audience. Obviously, an MMO needs a thriving economy, so it's funny to me that they sell it as a core feature. They gave no specifics to what makes Bellator's unique in this crafting department, so I think it's safe to say it's not unique at all and will probably be exactly what we've seen many times over. They do acknowledge a housing system, but at the moment there are no deep details about it, and mounts are present, so it already has one thing over New World, but there is no talk of breeding. As of yet, why implement a breeding feature after all, when you can just sell mounts straight out of the store, am I right guys? Finally, the release window for this, uh game is a planning to be in the second half of 2024, but we're all familiar with MMORPG release windows nowadays. Throne and Liberty has been delayed 50 times, New World was in development hell, and there's no doubt in my mind, Ashes of Creation is delayed into oblivion. So take 2024 with a slight pinch of salt. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO, and my opinion means nothing without yours in the comments below. And Bellator's, although it sounds good, just reeks of a corporate cash grab to me. This one is most certainly one to be wary of, and when it arrives at half past never, just don't go giving away your money when it starts asking. As always, I want to thank my patrons. You guys can go ahead and give me money, because without your support, this balding middle-aged man wouldn't be able to live his dream of talking shit on the internet. If you made it to the end of the video, surely it's worth giving a like, and if you're not one of the 80% who haven't already, why not go ahead and subscribe? And I'll see you in the next one because you're high on copium.